in the case of uh, what's happening with Mars sample return, they're happening. The mission is happening right now as we speak, because while the Perseverance rover continues collecting scientifically selected samples on Mars right now, we're pleased to be here today with our European Space Agency partners to provide an update for bringing those samples back to Earth. The Mars Sample Return Program is nearing completion of its conceptual design phase. During this phase, known as Phase A, the program has been working diligently to study concepts for returning the high-value samples with the greatest degree of success. Considering this phase, uh, this, uh, during this phase, uh, the program examined a number of configurations to collect the cache samples from the surface of Mars and deliver them to the land at the lander carried by the Mars Ascent vehicle that will bring it back home to Earth uh, on the Earth return orbiter. Early this year during phase A, we announced an iteration that added a second lander to carry the sample fetch rover to Mars due to the mass requirements of the missions. We're learning a lot as we go forward, not only about the analysis of this, but also about perseverance that's, at, that's you know, right now uh, on Mars. So now with the conceptual design phase nearing completion and following the mission definition review, we have a path forward to using a revised and innovative architecture. We reached our decision based on new studies and recent achievements at Mars that allowed us to consider options that frankly weren't available to us one year ago or before. This new architecture relies on the Perseverance rover as the primary delivery system to bring samples to the sample retrieval lander, where ESA sample transfer arm will load the sample tubes into the Mars Ascent vehicle built by the United States. And we're adding two Ingenuity class helicopters as backups to transport the samples to the lander. The successful operational demonstration of the Ingenuity helicopters on Mars, frankly, was key to allowing us to consider and adapt to, to this change. So I'm going to hand it over to my colleague and friend, David Parker, the Director of Human and Robotic Exploration at ESA. You've introduced Karen, our partner in this effort, to discuss ESA's very important contribution to the Mars Sample Return Program, including the sample transfer arm and the Earth Return Orbiter. David. Thank you very much, Thomas, and good day to everyone from my side. Yes, thank you very much. It's a, a great to have the opportunity to participate in this update on the Mars Apple Return Program. Uh, it is for ESA uh, a very exciting program and a very important partnership with, uh, with our friends at NASA. I would say that Mars Sample Return is, is a unique mission because it combines both scientific and exploration goals by returning what I say are priceless scientific treasure from the red planet that will be studied in laboratories here on Earth worldwide for the next 50 years. It will answer fundamental questions about Mars, its early history, and its relationship with the Earth, and, and indeed the whole of the solar system. A very, very simple example, but an important one. Uh, it will allow for the very first time absolute age of rock and soil taken from a known geological context on the red planet and therefore, therefore provide ground truth to calibrate the age of all of the features of Mars for the first time. So as uh, at the same time Mars sample return is, is, you can think of it as an essential precursor or a stepping stone to an eventual human mission to Mars by demonstrating the, the engineering and operations of a complex multi-element mission up to 400 million kilometers from Earth. So I give you just one engineering, one scientific example to emphasize this point. Uh, ESA's Earth Return Orbiter that we're building right now, it's uh, well into its phase B and uh, past the preliminary design review. The Earth Return Orbiter Aero is a multi-stage spacecraft equipped with both chemical and solar electric propulsion, uh, more powerful than has ever been used on any previous planetary mission. So it's a technological challenge. But aboard the Earth Return Orbiter will be a radiation sensor being developed by one of our participating states in ESA, the European Space Agency, that's Hungary. And they will be this instrument will measure the total radiation dose experienced over the whole mission. So traveling to Mars, operating Mars, and returning home to Earth. 
and this will uh, therefore provide important information to assess the risk to future human explorers. So having set the context of the Mars Sample Return Program, I'd like to hand over to uh, my colleague Jeff Gramling from NASA, who is the Mars Sample Return Program Manager there. Jeff, please. All right, thank you, David, and uh, good morning and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I, we've reached a significant milestone in this campaign to return samples from Mars. Of course, the architecture for that campaign, beginning with perseverance, is really designed to go where the, the scientists uh, want to go to, to collect the samples to answer the, the questions that are, are being asked. Of course, we've already collected, uh, Perseverance has already collected nine scientifically selected samples that are, are, are there and uh, ready to be brought home. On July 15th, we completed the mission design or the mission definition review looking at the overall program, including the architecture, the requirements, uh, mission or the uh, organization, risk, and schedule. As Thomas uh, described, key to our new architecture is a recent assessment of Perseverance is reliability and life expectancy based on its performance to date. And that assessment also took into account the, the, uh, the, the, the uh, performance of Curiosity that's nearing its 10th uh, year of, of operation on Mars. There's, there's much shared uh, heritage in the mobility system. Based on that updated assessment, we have uh, confidence that the rover will be available to deliver samples to the sample retrieval lander in 2030 when we need it to be. So it's the primary path. Recent operations of the Ingenuity helicopter on Mars, which have completed uh, 29 flights, 24 more than originally planned, have shown us the usefulness and potential of rotorcraft on Mars. In recent months, studies conducted at JPL have evaluated the possibility of adding Ingenuity class helicopters to retrieve samples and to deliver them to our, our lander. With those studies, we are confident in adding helicopters to perform the role of, of backup to perseverance and transporting the sample tubes to the sample retrieval lander. The two Ingenuity class helicopters will be carried to Mars on the deck of our lander. The single lander will also carry the Mars Ascent Vehicle and the ESA-provided sample transfer arm. The plan for Perseverance is to drive to the landing location of the sample retrieval lander. There, ESA's sample transfer arm will extract the samples from Perseverance and load those samples into the Mars Ascent Vehicle. While we're adding helicopters as backups, many components of the program have not changed from the original architecture. We're, we we're, have a single sample retrieval lander now augmented with the Ingenuity class helicopters, the Mars Ascent Vehicle, the sample transfer arm, and ESA's Earth Return Orbiter with the NASA provided capture, containment, and return system. All of those remain unchanged. It's still early in this program. Our next key decision point is in September, at which time we expect to finalize the new architecture and move into our pre preliminary de design phase, which is phase B. Uh, next, we will hear from my colleague, Francois Spoto, the head of the Mars Exploration Group at ESA. Francois? Thank you very much, Jeff, and uh, good morning, good afternoon to, to everyone around the loop. Uh, a, a lot has been said already, so I'll focus a bit more on the ESA deliverables, uh, which are Earth Return Orbiter and Sample Transfer Arm, and make also some. Uh, some comments on sample catch over, which was also one of our development until now. So Earth Return Orbiter, uh, the mission is between preliminary design and critical design review. Uh, critical design review will happen in September uh, next year. Uh, the launch is due uh, in 2027 uh, in order to secure uh, the return of the samples on Earth in 2033. That's pretty important. And Aero is carrying uh, one major payload delivered by our friends at NASA, the Future Containment and Return System Payload, the CCRS. Uh, and together with uh, uh, this payload, Aero will be able to rendezvous the orbiting sample in orbit around Mars, uh, approach the orbiting sample carefully, and capture it before bringing it back uh, uh, to Earth, where basically in the desert of Utah, uh, samples uh, will, be, will be recovered uh, and transferred into a safe and, uh, and controlled place for um, uh, 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 later utilization and, uh, and scientific exploitation. STS sample transfer arm uh, is a robotic arm, pre pretty comparable to a human arm, actually. Uh, it is equipped with a gritter at the end, which is able to catch samples, samples from Perseverance, 
Uh, initially, it was also designed, of course, to catch samples from sample fetch rover, and it is now being uh, adapted to catch samples from uh, uh, the uh, gripping helicopters as well. Uh, the contract was signed in July, so very, very recently, uh, at the opportunity of the Farnborough Air Show in UK, uh, with the company in Italy called uh, Leonardo. It's an uh, international group that has also a branch uh, in space robotics. Now, sample fetch rover uh, is until now one of our, uh, of our development, and we had reached PDR. Uh, but we've been working very hard with uh, NASA over the last 16 months, I would say, to, to try to consider, uh, to reevaluate uh, what would make the mission ultra reliable. In order we build the maximum level of confidence into a safe return of the sample, we want to return to scientific exploitation. Uh, and finally decided that the best for the mission uh, was to discontinue the search rover. Why? Also because at that time we had uh, a very clear understanding of the extreme reliability of the Perseverance rover, which is or was in itself designed and conceived to bring uh, the samples uh, uh, to the bottom of the landing platform, where STA would be able to fetch uh, from Perseverance the samples and hand them over uh, to the Mars Ascent vehicle that was uh, mentioned before by, uh, by Thomas. So by doing that, we limit, of course, uh, uh, to the overall mission. And we also avoid significant extra costs because we can return to the very initial uh, concept where we had only one single uh, lender uh, within, within the system. Now, by the way, this is the configuration we've been reviewing two weeks ago at the level of the mission definition review together with, uh, with NASA, where the program was exposed uh, to a board uh, of experts who had basically to consider uh, the work on it now. Uh, and the capability of the teams uh, to switch from a phase A to, to, to a phase B. And, and the review was quite successful, even though we collected a number of very good wins on how uh, to make the, the mission more secure and more, more reliable. Uh, now, I would like to say that uh, uh, until now, uh, let's say this cooperation has really started in 2020. This is the time when we signed the, the memorandum of, of, of understanding. So we have already quite a significant experience to deal with each other, uh, especially with my colleague uh, uh, Jeff, who, who is in the group as well, uh, and the relationship between both organizations is very good, and, uh, and also uh, together with uh, the Jet Propulsion Lab, uh, who is uh, 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 in charge of the, of the campaign uh, re realization under, under NASA. Now, uh, after James Webb uh, Space Telescope, I, I think MSR is once again uh, an excellent case uh, of cooperation between NASA and NASA, and we are all uh, really motivated uh, at ESA to really push this program forward and to make it a good success uh, together. Thank you. Uh, this is what I wanted to, to, to mention uh, as an introduction.